Whether or not there is a Trump put in the market, tech got crushed today. Our next guest called the tech wreck exactly one week ago on Fast Money. Here it is, past two years, and here um, is the trend line in which the index, and literally, we stopped over and over and over at the high, at the low, and we are essentially right at the high again. My hunch is it's a time to reduce, take some profits. Does that mean that the other parts of the market come back that have been lagging like financial industrials? To be determined. But this is a little hot. Charmaster Carter Worth of Cornerstone Macro is back to double down on that call. Carter. Well, it is a little hot. I mean, some of the steep, uncorrected moves are a little uh, less steep today. But in principle, after that kind of ascent, after that many months and that much money drawn in, you don't expunge that excess in one or two days. The Friday, Monday sell off in principle, uh, likely to have more to go. But semis uh, is uh, really sort of one of the areas that within tech, it's, it's the beta trade, it's the investment trade, and it's the cyclical trade. And semis, um, this is the World Semiconductor Index. It's about 1.8 trillion, uh, 30, 40 stocks. Big names, obviously, like Intel in the US and Micron, but also things like Samsung, Taiwan Semi. Um, and so forth. And what we know is that for the first time in two and a half years, the moving average, the 150 million average, is now flat and on the cusp of turning down. And it has all the elements of a top, uh, not a good setup. But let's uh, move on to uh, the U.S. index, otherwise known as the SOX, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, on the top. And while it's not as damaged as the world index, I want to point out the relative performance to the tech sector, of which it's an important part. So the bottom panel is relative. If I put in this line, what you see here, of course, is that the relative performance actually peaked in December. Even as we've ascended, it's basically not making progress. And here's the key thing about that. In December, January, that's when we first got back above the dot-com high. So take a look at this. This is the chart. We know that the peak was, uh, it was a Tuesday. It was uh, March 13th. And we have been churning at that high. You can, you can see it quite precisely. So what we, what we did is we got back to that high and we've stumbled. And so then there's this. Last week, in a calendar week, you had tech down and the S&P down. And you had consumer staples and utilities up. Doesn't seem like that big a deal. But it's fairly infrequent. It's only happened uh, a handful of times. In fact, here is the data. This has happened a total of 49 times in the history of the data for a probability of 3 plus percent. And what happens thereafter is the following. One week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, when that condition is met, this is relative performance of tech to the market. Uh, tech underperforms. Another thing to just keep in mind. And then finally, just to end with the chart uh, from uh, last week, the bottom panel is relative performance to the market. Top panel is the tech sector. And we literally have lived within this channel. And we reach the top. And the presumption is, at a minimum, we're going to the bottom. I think you need to, one needs to, uh, consider this not over, but prospectively just the beginning. Carter comes over. Statement of fact. Yeah, there's, there's no question now. No question. Shall we bring Sharon? I mean, he made a great call last week. So he deserves that seat. My man. <laughs> Welcome. So, Carter, I got a little confused in, in the charts that you're showing to sure. us in terms of um, the tech and S&P being down and then staples and utilities being up. Are you saying that it's time to be in staples and utilities well, right now? No. So what we were just looking at, and this was from today's piece, is that if you have the circumstance where money is so aggressively moving out of tech, which is so dominant as a percentage of the S&P, and it is going into, it wasn't just utilities and staples, it was REITs as well. Mm -hmm. When that circumstance is met in any calendar week, what it has said more importantly is not so much about staples uh, and the other defensive areas, but that tech is underperformed, at least when that circumstance is met. Now, what we do know is, of course, those are acting well. You do have relative outperformance in staples, huge bounces at Pepsi and Clorox, but also utilities REITs. And that's just a defensive, um, truly defensive, right? Because growth is defensive till it's not. Right. That's just defensive defensive. Right, so let me ask you, the bottom of that channel on the last uh, chart the that you showed, how much lower is that than where we are currently? And do you so think it'll break the bottom of that? Yeah, well, that's the risk, right? You know, your channels can only go for so far, and then you either break out of them or, or, or above them. Um, listen, he, here's the thing. I mean, it's not about the S&P. It's about the internals of the S&P. We know that, think about it, industrials down 4 5%. 
financials down four. That's the core middle. That's where the narrative was for post-election. And, and there is no synchronized global growth. That whole story's the bloom is off. So we're so dependent on big tech names. And if we lose those, what do you have? Right. So, so they, you just touched on that. So it's the internals that concern me because that controls the macro S&P. So the 2532, I know that you're a big 150-day smoothing mechanism guy. That's 2704 in the cash. We broke that just a, a wee bit today. Markets overshoot, they undershoot. Am I looking to hold those lows? Obviously, it's a big question, but it's the bigger the question is 2532 is sure. the level that I should be concerned with, and the Absolutely. rest is just noise around that. Sure. Remember, moving average is an automated trend line. People use different ones, right? Um, some have more veracity than others. It really doesn't matter. But what we do know is if you're measuring trend, changes in trend are defined by a change in a trend line. And the moving averages in the Bloomberg World Bank Index, um, other major aggregates are all turning down. Um, the U.S., if you look at this, the MSCI All Country World Index, X the U.S., the whole thing's going there. So it's, it's the U.S. that's holding everything up. And within that, it's tech. If we lose the stalwarts, what do we have? What does that smoothing mechanism look like for the U.S. markets then? So it is effectively flat. It depends what you inject. Okay. The New York Stock Exchange Composite, it's turned down. Uh -huh. On the Value Line Index, it's flat. Um, on the Russell, we know it's still rising. But remember, the Russell doesn't matter in the sense that, again, it's too small to move the needle for the whole market. So are we at a critical point for the U.S. stock market? Well, what's so ironic is that everything's perfect on the headlines, isn't it? I mean, you hear these things. I go to meetings and people are like, wait a minute, below 4% unemployment and S&P earnings at 25%, revenues at 11%. It's a record, a tax accommodative uh, policy, and, and interest rates so low. Maybe we should be paying attention all to all that the positive. The market priced it all in. That December, January run-up, that it priced it all in. Markets are smart. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.